Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, On One Software updated Resize. It's now Resize AI 2026. In today's video, we're going to take a look at it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to compare the results I get using Resize AI 2026 to Photoshop. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is because whenever I do a video demonstrating an application that will upscale an image, People will comment or send me an email asking me why they just can't export that image from Lightroom or Photoshop and upscale it when they export it. Well, I think the reason why you shouldn't do that will be obvious once you watch this video. Now, what we're going to do is I have this image here. It was taken a few years ago with Nikon D800E of this red tail hawk. Now, this is the full resolution image. Unfortunately, my lens wasn't long enough. I couldn't really get in tight enough to that hawk. So what I did is I heavily cropped the image and I ended up with this. And you can see I cropped right into the red tail hawk's head. This is a very low resolution image. You can see it's, it's very blurry. As a matter of fact, this is 370 pixels by 462 pixels. If I wanted to print this, I couldn't get a good quality 5x7 print out of this. So what I want to do is I want to upscale it so I could get a decent quality 8x10 print. And I'm going to upscale it in both Photoshop and, as I mentioned, Resize AI 2026. Let's do Photoshop first. So I'm going to take this heavily cropped image and I'm going to open it up into Photoshop. And I mentioned that people ask me why they just can't export it from Lightroom or Photoshop and upscale it then. So let's do that. I have it in Photoshop. We're going to go up to File export export as we're going to export as a jpeg at high quality and it's very low resolution as i mentioned 370 by 462 and i mentioned that i want to get a decent size 8 by 10 or decent quality 8 by 10 print from it so to do that i need to upscale it at least four times and if my calculations are correct that would make the width 1480 and when i tap the tab key you could see it automatically filled in the height of 1848 and I'm going to not convert it to sRGB. I'm going to embed the color profile. So this is the JPEG I'm going to export. And I'm going to rename it Photoshop-RedTailHawk.JPEG. And we'll put it on the desktop with the other two images. And we'll get rid of Photoshop. Now, I have now three images on my desktop i have the full resolution image which i cropped heavily and got this cropped image and now this is the photoshop version that's been upscaled let's take that cropped image now and open it up into on one resize ai 2026 and what you'll find is there's a lot more options here because this application is built to upscale an image so there's a lot of things you could do uh, to improve the quality of the image First of all, on the left-hand side, there are some presets. If, you, if you're printing to a very specific kind of paper, what you could do, let's say you're going to make it uh, Epson matte. You could click on that, and then you're going to say, I wanted an 8x10, remember? So I could go Epson matte 8x10. I could click on this preset. It would automatically go over the right-hand panel and fill in everything I need to get an 8x12 or an 8x10 print using Epson matte paper. But... Let's say we're not sure of the paper yet. I just want to upscale it and improve the resolution. So what I mentioned is with the Photoshop I uh, print or the Photoshop image, I upscaled it four times. I made it 1480 by 1848. So what we'll do here on photo size, we're going to make it 1480. And if I tap the tab key, it should automatically put the height at 1848. And we'll leave the resolution at the default 370 pixels per inch. Now we'll go down to settings. Oh, we have two main settings here. We have the standard model. And what is new with uh, Resize AI 2026 is this highest quality uh, model. This takes the longest to render, but it does a really nice job. So I'm going to use that. If you want to use an older model, you could click on model here and you could go to this drop down. You could see that the older models are here, 2026 by cubic and general fractals. So we're going to use that 2026 highest quality model. Now I want to sharpen it because look how blurry it is, right? And I'm going to give you my secret sauce for sharpening um, animals. 
Um, I do this with um, Resize AI all the time, and it usually does a great job. Sometimes I might have to redo it, come in and just tweak it a little because it won't really show you the results over here. What I do whenever I have a heavily cropped image of a bird or any type of animal, really, fur or feathers, is I take detail. I use progressive sharpening, first of all. I take detail all the way down, and I put amount at 30. So just like that. Now, there are style presets at the top. So if you want to fix focus, you could click on these, let's say, and go through these. There's more in the dropdown. You can see there's a lot more, and there's some for specific paper. But I mentioned I want to use progressive. I put the amount at 30, and I put the detail at 0, threshold at 0. And then if you click on protect, I have all these at 0 as well. There's also options here if you have people in the image. A lot of times if you're upscaling and sharpening, it will make their face look funny. You could do face recovery. And a lot of times, too, if you, it's a really heavily cropped image, their face looks blurry. And this will help fix that. You could uh, do stuff with film grain. You have the option here. I'm not doing that. Sometimes if images are real blurry and you just add a little grain, it, it makes them look sharper for some reason. If you're doing tiling, you could tile images or you could do gallery wrap. So if you're printing the canvas and you're going to wrap it on a frame, you have uh, that option here as well. But again, really all I want to do for this specific image is I want to upscale it 4x. And I want to sharpen it with the highest quality. Or I want to upscale it with the highest quality and sharpen it with my secret sauce. Now if I wanted to uh, save this, I could do that. I could go to this more and I could save this as a new style. Uh, but it's really, I just mainly, it's so easy to just move the sliders. I never saved it as a style. And that's all I want to do. And that's it. So we're going to click the little blue check mark over here. And then it's going to, you know, for the name, and it has resize here, but I'm going to put, I'm going to put uh, it at the front. Resize ai dash red tail hawk and i want to save it as a jpeg so we're comparing apples to apples oranges to oranges we'll roll this open larger so it's saved as a jpeg to the desktop and it's the same size as the photoshop uh, export we did and we're going to make it maximum quality just like we did photoshop and click ok and it's going to save and when it saves it will close down now one thing i i would change if i was the developer of this application is i wouldn't let it close down i'd leave it open and the reason why i would do that is i mentioned that i sharpened it with my secret sauce and sometimes i have to come back in and tweak it and i would prefer it stayed open because then it would be easier for me to just tweak it let's say if 30 wasn't sharp enough or if it was too sharp i could come back in and readjust it as it stands now, I'd have to open the image up all over again and then go through all the settings again. So I'd prefer not do that. So uh, if anyone's listening, you may want to consider maybe make that a menu option. So we have the, um, the two JPEGs, the Photoshop one and the resize one. Let's open both of those up in Photoshop so we could compare them. And they'll open up as separate tabs, but I'll put them on top of one another so we could look at it. Here's the... the um, the resized one from um, Resize AI. Um, let's just take that, move it right to the other tab and hold the shift key down so it goes right on top. All right, this is Resize AI. Let's fit it to screen. Hit Command-0, Control-0 on the Mac. Look at that. Resize AI, Photoshop. Resize AI, Photoshop. Resize AI. I mean, come on, there's no comparison. Now you're probably wondering, well, you could have sharpened it in Photoshop. You wouldn't have been able to sharpen it. Uh, you could go up. I'm on the Photoshop layer. I would go up to filter, um, down to sharpen. I don't know. Which one do you want to use? Smart chop and a lot of people use. Um, maybe bring the radius up. You can see. Come on. I mean, I could be here all day, but still. Look how much better Photo AI is compared to Photoshop just really no comparison um by the way as far as like print resolutions i mentioned that i wanted to make it um four times larger that'd be 1480 by 1848 to get a good 8 by 10 print on my website i have a list of recommended or minimum resolutions for good quality prints and high quality prints 
It's a PDF that you could download for for free from my website and print at home, and it has various print sizes. I'll have a link to that in the description below this video. So that's Resize AI. Now, in future videos, I'll compare Resize AI to other applications that upscale images so that you could get an idea of which one might work best for you. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.